to be, amen? Uh, I, uh, our first time here, and uh, you, you anticipate and you wonder, you, just, you don't never know, and I, I've been with your preacher in, in different meetings, different places, clear across this country. Some of these folks, I've been in their churches, but I'm glad you came, and I'm glad everybody's here tonight, and I'm glad most of all that he came. Yeah. Oh, he was here when we got here. And, and uh, this is his house. You know, I, I'm just honored to be uh, privileged to come into his house. Been washed in the blood. We was in a little church uh, on New Year's Day in Gallipolis, Ohio. That's the mountain parts of Ohio. And uh, they sang a song that said, I know, I know I've been born again. And it said, I know, I know, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's like the world couldn't give it and the world can't take it away. Praise his name. So thank you for coming. And uh, Preacher Childers and Brother James, uh, thank you for inviting us to come. It's, but we've been a trying probably two years to work it out to get here. And he'd, he'd call and I'd already be scheduled and I'd tell him, uh, I, we'll love to come, but uh, so we was at Spartanburg in September, and I told him, I said, now, if you want these days, I know it ain't the most popular days of the year, but I've got these days on my way to Florida, and we'll stop by and have church if you want to. He said, well, we ain't never done it like this. I said, well, maybe we ought to try it. And he said, well, let's do it. So I called him back uh, before Christmas, and I said, you, we still on? He said, Lord, yeah, we're praying and happy about you coming. And uh, this snow, I, I, I think, Lord, just move her a little further north little further north. Just drop her down about Charlotte and that's fur enough. I, how about that? And uh, let us have church here. But whatever, we thank Pastor Todd and his dear church and uh, for we're staying there and, and uh, preacher offered a motel room, whatever we wanted, we stay there and they've got a beautiful place there for preachers to go and just rest and stay in their home and that house beside the church. So we are grateful for you to be here. Todd's baby's here and uh, um, my baby girl, I, I claim her. Uh, I've, I've been watching her grow up, and she got her permit to drive. And I told her, I said, Hannah, I'm happy for you, but when I saw the picture, there was tears come in my eyes because I'm a getting old. Amen. Some of you forgot how to be old. You already old. You've been old so long, you don't know how to be old. Amen. Uh, old ain't so bad if you don't look at it that way, I believe. Right. Somebody said, son, you're just a pup. You is a spring chicken. Well, I might not be so old, but I'm high mileage, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so we're excited to be here again. Thank you for coming. Well, if you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to the gospel according to Luke chapter two. You pray hard. I'll preach fast. The more you say amen, the quicker we get done. Amen. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> I love Brother Hoppy now. I nicknamed him that. I guess he's, a lot of places they call him that. He's my friend. I'll be uh, riding down the road and, uh, or come out of a meeting and come out of a restaurant and look at my phone. There'll be a message on there. Pre old Brother Joe will be calling, encouraging the man of God. Keep on keeping on. That, I told him, you don't ever know. He said, you don't have to call back. I, I, and sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. But boy, what a, I've got one I save on my phone until he sends another. Because that's a blessing. Because a lot of times we ride down the road hours, hours, and, and somebody says, well, I know you're so busy. I hate to bother you. Just go ahead and bother us. I'll put it like this. If you call and I don't want to talk to you, I won't answer. <laughs> You're laughing because you do the same thing, amen? That's why they make him that way. That's why that caller ID comes up on there. But uh, I always call back, and I thank God for his blessings. Luke chapter 2, if you found your place, I'll ask you to stand if you're able and willing for the reading of the word of God. I'll just read one verse, Luke chapter 2, verse 7. If you're there, say amen. amen. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger 
because there was no room for them in the inn. I want to look tonight on one part of this verse and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. I like to preach just for a few moments, if it be the Lord's will, and you pray real sweet that God will use us. I like to preach on the garments of Christ. The garments of Christ. Lord, we love you. Thank you for this place. Lord, I thank you for these people, your people. God, I thank you, Lord, for your presence here in power. Lord, I know you was here when we come, but you've made yourself, Lord, known among your people. Lord, you expressed yourself in us, and we begin to worship and praise you. Lord, I'm asking you now to use your preacher just for a few moments. God, use me to do what you would have me to do. Guard my tongue that I'll only say that which you have me to say. Keep me in the lives of this blessed book. We'll give you glory and honor and praise for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Now look over at your neighbor and say you're looking as good as you can tonight. <laughs> praise his name. I recently uh, acquired a book. Actually, it was a gift. I love to read on different things. Uh, I like little books. I, I look at big old thick books and I think they got too much to say. I just like little books because they get it said in less time than them old big books. Now my favorite book is the one laying on this desk. It's my Bible. I believe every word in it even though I don't understand them all, I believe them. And someone might say that there's greater things to preach on than the garments of Christ, but if it's in the book, I believe it's worthy of being preached on. Amen. And I'll agree, there's nothing like the cross, there's nothing like the blood, there's nothing like uh, that, what he done for us, but he came and the Bible said was clothed in the likeness of flesh. Isaiah said, who is this that cometh from Edom, who's from Basra, who is addressed in glorious apparel? Can I tell you something? He is who he is, and I'm glad I know who he is. And in this holiday season, Merry Christmas, by the way. Amen. Bless God, I heard that more this year than I've heard it in the last 10 years. Thank the Lord. Amen. It's more than a holiday. It's the birth of Jesus Christ. He is Christmas. Amen. But when we look at this and I thought about this and I begin to study on these things, the Bible said that there was no room for them in the end and they went out to a barn or a cave or a manger it would be called where the beast would lay, where the beast would come to feed, where the beast would come to get out of the weather. Somebody said, isn't it strange that the Son of God would come in such a place where beasts dwell? I said, honey, it's not strange at all because he come to conquer the greatest beast that is Satan who is the prince and power of the air. He come, bless God, that he might bring us up eternal life. So as she's there in that manger, it's probably cool. It's probably not the best facility. It's probably not the prettiest place. It probably doesn't smell very good. But nevertheless, in that manger, the Son of God was birthed through a virgin womb into this world. I read and there's no handmaids there. There's no nurses there. There's nothing there to ease the pain in the childbirthing. And it's probably ordered of God. Why would there not be anyone else there? Because the only virgin hands were qualified to hold the baby of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, I'm busy preaching. 
Then he was born and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes, linen cloths, or death rags. It's the same thing that they buried people in. Bless God, it was already being sown that even in his birth, he came to die. That was his purpose, to die that you and I who were already dead in our sins and trespasses might be brought back to life. What do you mean? The Bible said what we lost in the first Adam, we gained in the last Adam of being Christ, who was born in the likeness of flesh of a woman, yet without sin. I like what the writer in Hebrews I wrote about it in about the ninth chapter, uh, the 24th verse. Uh, he starts like this. Uh, For Christ hath not entered in uh, to the holy place made by hand, which are the figures of the true, uh, but now into heaven itself. Uh, not that he should often appear with the blood of others uh, as the priest of old, uh, but now once in the last day uh, hath he appeared to put away sin uh, by the sacrifice of himself. Uh, and as it's once appointed uh, unto a man to die after this judgment uh, but unto them that look for him uh, shall he appear a second time uh, without sin uh, unto salvation I say bless God uh, I'm glad he was born uh, I'm glad he died uh, but I'm glad he got up again uh, and he's alive and well tonight uh, wrapped in swaddling clothes then we begin to look I don't want to Worry your patience. I want you to come back tomorrow night if you're able. Boy, if everybody brought somebody else with them, you know what? We'd have twice as many as we got tonight. But that doesn't bother me. I preach to three and I preach to thousands. It's the same Lord that helps us. But we begin to look at the garments of Christ. He would have had five pieces of garments. He would have had the headdress. He would have had the girdle. He would have had his sandals. He would have had a coat and then he would have had the cloak, the inner garment that he wore. That inner garment that he wore was a special garment. It was without seam. It was made from top to bottom. He would wear all of these garments as being a Jewish man. And then it's peculiar to me that these garments, somebody said the garments couldn't be much. Well, don't tell a lady that's been sick for 12 years that the garments don't have much meaning to them. The Bible said Jairus is trying to get Jesus to go to his house to touch his daughter. And while they're on their way, there's a woman and not that's had an issue of blood for 12 long years. Bless his holy name. And all oh, the Bible said she's done everything she can. She's been everywhere they've told her. She's been to the specialist. She's been to the herbist. She's been to the old out everyone that would mention any help. And the Bible said that she's broke. Now she has no money and she's getting worse day by day. But she hears about a man called Jesus. Oh, bless his name. And I hear her begin to say to herself, if I can just touch the him of his garments I shall be made whole faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen for by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves but it is the gift of God and I understand what she's determined here she's going to die she needs to get to Jesus why why would she want to touch the hem of his garment? Why wouldn't she want to touch the flowing robe? Why would she not want to touch his sandals? Why would she not want to touch the headdress? Why the hem of his garment? 
I believe there's something there that's important. And I notice this. She realizes that if she leaves her home, she's not permitted to be in society. She's expelled from society. She's expelled from her family. She is considered unclean. Someone can take her life and they would not even be held accountable. But she determines, I'm dying anyway. I'm going to do my best to get to touch Jesus and bless the Bible said she pressed through in that crowd that she might touch but the hem of his garment. Now before you begin to say things I've read the Bible. I've read history. I've read books. I've read sometimes till I've about read out. I'll just tell you the Lord been dealing with my heart. I ain't got no obliterating points tonight I'm just preaching amen that book right there it'll preach it don't need what we got to put with it (laughs) it'll just preach oh she can't even love on her babies we were home three weeks that's very unusual Christmas falling on Sunday messed everything up for an evangelist amen we home three weeks I didn't know hardly what to do with myself but play with my grandbabies hallelujah had a good time Oh, but now she wasn't allowed to do that, Todd. She couldn't have any dealings with that. But she's going to Jesus. Why the him? of his garment. I submit to you tonight that when she touches the hem of his garment she touches the cross. Oh, you say, now preacher, wait a minute. In every Jewish garment, man's robe, uh, there was a blue cord uh, that was sewn into the bottom of the garment. Uh, But do you know why that was put there? Uh, That was put there, Brother Gary, uh, as when they seen that, uh, Brother James Childers, it was a reminder uh, to read the word of God uh, or the Torah, that which they had. Uh, A reminder uh, for them to read the word of God. Uh, But can I tell you tonight, uh, The man that's wearing this robe, he don't need to be reminded (laughs) of the word of God. He is the word. In the beginning was God, and in the beginning was he with God, and without him nothing made that was made, and all things are made by him, and all things are made for him. Bless God, I'm telling you, it was a picture, and she touched the cross. How can you say that? Well, give me five minutes, and I'll try to tell you. Who'll give me five minutes? Raise your hand. Five, 10, 15, 20. Amen. What do you mean? Uh, Well, listen here. Uh, The hem of his garment. Uh, Oh, any seamstress will tell you this, uh, that the final finished work uh, of a piece of garment is the hem uh, that is made. That's what they do last. Uh, After the garment is put together, uh, the hem is the final work. Uh, Can I, mm, bless God. Uh, I just felt the breath of heaven right there. Uh, Oh, listen, I'm here to tell you, I know that there's going to be a him. The material has to be turned or lifted up. Amen. Uh, John in his writings uh, uh, Jesus said if I be lifted up uh, I'll draw all men uh, unto me Uh, the him it had been lifted up Uh, bless God a picture of Calvary Uh, why would you say that Uh, because after the material uh, has been lifted up uh, uh, there comes the piercing Uh, uh, the needle uh, uh, will run through that material Uh, oh bless his name glory to God if somebody finished this I'd shout hey listen my friend they pierced his darling side after he had already died and forthwith came blood and water so the him has been lifted up and the piercing has taken place but then there's something that follows the piercing 
And that would be the thread. Uh, the thread would follow through that. Uh, I say unto you, that's the blood of Jesus yes, Christ. Yes. Uh, why, if they just ran the piercing through uh, and nothing else followed it, uh, you know what would happen? Uh, the hem would fall down. Uh, the hem would not stay in place. Uh, the hem would not be fixed. Uh, the hem would not be perfect. Uh, the hem would not be the final work. Uh, but the blood of Jesus Christ uh, appears through there uh, and bless God can I tell you something why does the thread have to be there I told you so it don't come unraveled uh, so it don't fall down uh, can I submit to you tonight uh, the gospel ain't gonna fall down uh, the gospel ain't gonna come unraveled uh, the gospel ain't gonna change he's the same yesterday today and forevermore and he changes not. So I believe when she touched the hem of his garment, she touched the cross, one of his garments, and immediately she was made whole. Now, she didn't touch just the H-E-M, but she got a hold of the H-I-M. Amen. Immediately she was made whole, and then confession came. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's almost a thing of the past anymore. Uh, they walk up here chewing their bubble gum. I uh, get down, say a little weak watered prayer. I uh, get up skipping back. Uh, bless God, leave the house of God. You don't ever see them come back. Uh, I'm here to tell you an old fashioned uh, Holy Ghost blue sky. A spinning wheel conviction gets a hold of you. Uh, you'll make a change. Amen. You won't want it when you get it. <laughs> Amen. You want rid of that stuff right there. It's a mess. Conviction is. And when you get saved, I believe you'll go back to the house of God. It's like that story I read recently of that soldier who come back and, and one of his comrades, one of his dear friends, uh, he had watched uh, one of the, an old man went and sat on a park bench uh, and it was by a cemetery uh, and he noticed every day uh, uh, this young soldier boy would come to this grave uh, and he would clean off the, uh, the ground. He would clean off the marker. Uh, he made sure everything was proper and in its place uh, and then he would stand there and salute. Uh, oh, and one day finally the old man just just had to ask. He said, son, why do you do that? Why do you come out here every day and do what you do? He said, sir, he said, we were in battle and the man's body that's laying there, the reason I'm not laying there is because of that man. He gave his life. He covered me up and gave his life that I might live. And he said, my friend, he said, if somebody was so kind and grateful and gave their life for you, wouldn't you want to make sure everything... Who bless God, hallelujah, was in its proper place. I've got a better story than that. Some 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ went to Calvary. Notice what the Bible said. I'm trying to hurry. I've ready old in for a landing place. You just pray God sends back the signal, Amen. We'll try to land this plane down. I'm telling you, I ain't got time. I've got maybe if the snow don't run us off, I can get on some more of it. But listen here, Jesus was in the common court and the Bible said that the soldiers took him and they put him in a chair and they took off his garment, placed on him a scarlet garment, put a reed in his hand and placed the crown of thorns on his head, bowed a knee in mockery. But then the Bible said and then they took off that garment and put upon him his own garment and now by the time he gets to Calvary. Uh, there's only one piece of garment he has left uh, upon its body. That's that inner garment. Uh, that's that woven uh, linen. Uh, that's woven from top to bottom. Uh, the only way you're going to get in is go through him. <laughs> Ooh, bless God. And by the way, mm, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost of heaven, Joe. Uh, and while uh, uh, he's there, they go to Calvary. Uh, and there he stands uh, in that linen garment. Uh, he 
priest standing there as priest. Uh, that's what the priest wore uh, when they went into the holies of holies. Uh, he's standing there as priest. Uh, as he gets to Calvary, uh, the Bible said they parted his garments. Uh, four soldiers were there. Each one of them would have got a piece of his garment. Uh, and then the Bible said uh, that they chose not to part uh, the inner garment, but they cast lots for it. Why? Wow, it was valuable. It was valuable even to them on that day. Bless God, it's valuable. <laughs> It's valuable today. Uh, bless God, hallelujah. Uh, but there they stripped him of that garment uh, and nailed him to the cross. Uh, and they took him up on a tree. Uh, and the Bible said he became a curse that we could live forever. Uh, and then, no doubt, uh, uh, they took him down from that tree uh, and they wrapped him in grave clothes or linen clothes. Uh, and they placed him in a tomb but they sealed it shut but oh three days later God looked down from heaven said get up son and he got up didn't need the rock to move away he could have walked through the rock he just an angel rolled her away Jesus walked out and declared I'm he who is alive and dead I'm alive forevermore I've got the keys of hell and of death and as I live Ye shall live also. He's there in his garment as priest. But then we see him after he leaves. He appears in Revelation chapter one. Things are different. Things have changed. John says, I've been expelled from the among the living. I've been put out here on this old desert island. <laughs> but I was in the spirit. <laughs> Dear Lord, that shot clear out my toes. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Everybody else may have left, but he didn't. <laughs> Nobody else may have stayed out here with me, but oh, the Holy Spirit's there. And he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you in the sixth trouble, and yea, in the seventh, I'll have no evil to come against you. There he is. John hears a voice. He says, it's like a trumpet. It's like the sound of mighty rushing waters uh, and the voice says I'm Alpha and Omega I'm the beginning, I'm the end I'm the first and I'm the last I'm going to tell you some things son and I want you to pin them in a book and I want you to send them to the churches uh, that they might know who I am for I am he who was and is and is to come. John said, I'd had about all I could go. So I finally got the courage to turn and see the voice <laughs> Ooh, it spake unto me. And he said, when I turned, I saw him clothed from his head to his feet. It was a white garment, no doubt. His hair was white as snow, even as wood. Uh, his were girded about his paps uh, when a girdle was worn around the waist work was being done but when the paps girdle was around the paps victory who had been won his feet burned like brass in a furnace uh, his eyes as a flame of fire uh, out of his mouth came a sharp two edged sword uh, get a hold of this boy this right here if that thing blessed you uh, this right here don't bless you your blessers broke uh, amen uh, there he stands clothed from his head to his feet. I read in the Bible where he said there is one body. There are many members, but there is one body. And as God has placed us in the body, there shall we so work. Oh, and it said there is one head of this body. Somebody tell me who the head is. That be Jesus, amen. But he's clothed now to his feet. What do you get out of that preacher? I don't care if you're the thumb. I don't care if you're the kneecap. I don't care where you are on the body. Can I tell you? He's got us all covered. <laughs> Ooh, from top to 
bottom. He's got us all covered. And I've got good news for you. One of these days after a while, the trump of God's gonna sound. I'm gonna get me a robe just like that. I'm going home to live with him forever and forever. And bless God, there's one thing in John chapter, Revelation chapter one, when you see him there, there's only one thing that's missing from the king. What is it? It's his crown. And bless God, one day you and I will crown him king of kings and lord of lords. And when she had brought forth her firstborn son, she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's a robe out there. You can't have mine. Wouldn't fit you. <laughs> and I may not get a comeback for making this statement. I believe everybody's got a robe. It's just whether or not they accept Christ and go there and accept it. You say, preacher, that's a bold statement. Well, the Bible says it's not God's will that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. Now, the same God that wrote that verse could not be God if he didn't have a robe for everybody. Am I right? God don't do things halfway. Oh, by the way, while they get a verse of song for invitation, I don't know how you want your crew to do that. Musicians, however y'all do it, come get it ready for a verse of invitation. Let me tell you this. Somebody said, why was that garment so valuable? It was seamless. See, I believe it was like this. I don't think he was righteous a few months and then unrighteous, and right. then back righteous and then unrighteous. <laughs> I believe his righteousness was seamless. Hallelujah. Peter said in him, yes. there's no sin nor guile. We serve a perfect God. Amen. I don't know what kind of God you're serving, but if he ain't perfect, I'd get the one that is. That's right. There's a bunch of folks serving dead gods. Somebody said, well, your God, your, your prophet died, your Messiah died. Yeah, he did, but he didn't, get, he didn't stay dead. You surely don't think I'm gonna bow down to a pot-bellied statue that's got ears and can't hear, eyes and can't see, a nose and can't smell, arms and can't hug, feet and can't walk? Why, no. See, my God, I live in him. And in him I have my being. He walks with me every day. I'll ask you to bow your heads as she plays softly on the piano just for a moment. I don't know your hearts tonight. My prayer is, as Paul was for Israel, that you're all saved. But I wonder tonight as she's playing, if there's one here in this sanctuary that's not yet been clothed in his righteousness. Not yet been saved, but you don't wanna die lost. This won't save you, I won't embarrass you. Would you slip up your hand, take it right back down and say, preacher, I'm not saved. Would you pray for me? Is there one anywhere, anywhere? Maybe there's someone here that's saved, but you're away from God. You'll always hear me say this every night you hear me preach. Every time you hear me preach, God's not mad at you. He loves you. Would you slip up your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. 